Little King's story is masterfully built around its job class system. It's truly one of the most important features fueling the gameplay's identity. King Karabo controls the citizens to do whatever task he throws at them, or more accurately, whatever task he throws them at. But what informs the interaction between a person and whatever obstacle falls at their feet is their job. The game proudly posts a whopping 20 different types of job, and while some of these are exclusive to only one special citizen, for the majority of jobs, anyone can instantly become a member of that workforce just by being thrown into their respective workplace. That's a pretty lackluster training program old Poco's got there. Or maybe it's just really intense, either way, poor guys. And just like real life, with this many ways to make a living, it's natural that not all occupations are created equally. Even with the most earnest attempts at balancing, at the end of the day, some of these jobs are naturally going to end up better than- Okay, yeah, let's face it, the worst job is the carefree adult. Having nothing to offer except their... hands. The carefree adults can't break anything, like wood, or stone, or... cake. They can only really dig, although contrary to what I said in a previous episode, they can fight enemies, even barehanded, but oh forgive me for not noticing. However, can we really call this a job? Carefree adults are... carefree. They're unemployed. It's like telling a homeless person, yeah, I don't know, just not the career path for me. Carefree adults are the default blank slate status of all Poco citizens. All regular citizens start out as carefree adults when they first move in or grow up. So of course they have bare minimum abilities. See, in LKS, jobs have very utility, but that correlates with their availability. The grunt soldiers can fight well, and that's kind of all they've got going for them. You get them at the very beginning of the game, and training one costs nothing. Meanwhile, the hardened soldiers fight even better, can perform special attacks and block the odd enemy attack while retreating. They're a straight upgrade to the grunts. But if you want these bad boys, then you need to go and defeat a bunch of guardians first and fork up a million ball for each one you train. See, this is the game's general approach to balancing jobs. In theory, the better it is, the more difficult it is to unlock. So really, the worst job wouldn't be here, but here. A job with a high barrier of entry, but whose low usefulness really doesn't compensate for it. And in my opinion, there's one job that really fits that bill. Meet the Rainbow Wizard. The worst job in Little King's story. The Rainbow Wizard is so elusive that back when the game first came out, he was comparable to a myth. I'm telling you man, he's under the truck! After defeating the Mush Geezer, King Karabo can open up a theme park known as Magical Land. It has a photo stand-in that you can buy for a thousand ball, making it the cheapest kingdom plan in the game. Oh man, I've always wanted to be Karabo. Or you can snag the main attraction itself for 20 million. 20 million? Okay, that's gonna cost a lot of taxes. This had better be worth it. Let's see, uh, we have ourselves an Alpokian written sign. That's pretty neat. The tiling in this plaza sure is lovely. There's some uh, cardboard cutouts of some wizard looking houses. They have entrances like any other property, but citizens can't actually reach them for anything. And that's it. Oh, there's some carefree adults here dressed up in purple gowns who claim to have magical powers. Oh, really? Where are your powers now? Hey, at least this place is nice enough to have some porta potties. Oh man, of course they're occupied, that's just typical. Hey, hey, don't be a baby, nobody will know you went at the lady loose. And just behind them is art piece number 69, okay, are you kidding me? You can unlock this district as early as the halfway point of the game, after beating the first three rival kings, but it won't do you much good for a long time. A long time. Not until you've defeated all seven kings and you're nearing the end of the game. Once you're at that stage, a villager will approach the throne at some chance point and tell you there's been sightings of a real legit sorcerer this time. And when that's happened, you can then go to Magical Land and see that there's still nobody there. Unless you go at midnight and boom. Wizard. It was a lot of work to get you here, buddy. You have a lot to prove. I'll accept balloon animals as compensation. The Rainbow Wizard is one of several secret jobs in this game, an individual with a uniquely held job class that only he can claim his name to. These jobs have special skills that could only really make sense for one citizen at a time, and in the Rainbow Wizard's case, it's casting spells. Since this guy can't do much else, this had better be some ability. When the wizard targets an enemy, he stands some distance back from them to perform a little routine to cast Morph Magic. Once this long startup animation is finished, he fires a ball of energy at the enemy, and if they're hit, there are two similar effects that can occur at random. Either the enemy is briefly turned to stone, or briefly turned to wood, both immobilizing them for a short amount of time. This gives the opportunity for the player to then send in miners or lumberjacks respectively to do what they do best and pummel through the now transformed enemy. And that's the wizard. 
This is obviously a real creative idea, but understands and utilizes Little King Story's mechanics perfectly well. And the visual effect of seeing the enemy in a different material looks really cool. Lumberjacks for miners are cheaper than the better soldiers, so as a silly alternate strategy, it ain't bad. Yeah, in a vacuum, I really like this. Uh, but sadly, in practice, mm. See, getting this so far in the game means that it's kind of too late to change your entire combat strategy. I've spent the whole adventure perfecting how to use soldiers and setting them up with my most stellar equipment and what, now you're giving me a job that will make enemies harder for them to kill? Yes, soldiers are some of the slowest jobs at breaking through obstacles like logs and rocks, and enemies transformed into these materials are the same story. Now, due to how the game works, if a soldier has already begun attacking an enemy, and then that crit is hit with magic, then the soldier will carry on as normal and it won't slow them down, they'll maintain their attacking rate. So, yeah, there is a way around the issue, albeit a clumsy one. But even still, send any more after that and the enemy's new form as a statue is just gonna get in their way. So, assuming you're using this guy, the most tactical thing you can do is send soldiers, and then cast a spell, and then send in your demolition dudes. The game's job ordering in the Royal Guard even supports this, but oof, that's a lot of steps just for a tiny bit of reward. Not to mention the wizard might be too slow to even cast the spell once the soldiers have caught the enemy's attention. Now, you could argue that this at least gives something for miners and lumberjacks to do in combat. You're gonna have them on hand to clear out rocks and logs anyway, so this lets them get their hands stuck in with fighting too, instead of twiddling their thumbs during enemy encounters. Making them multi-purpose is great and all, yet once again, this late in the game there's not really enough rocks and logs in the way anymore, so you probably can just drop them entirely. Heck, there's not a whole ton of major enemies left either. Not that there's none, but man, I went through a lot of effort for this dude. Maybe if he was unlocked early, you could build an alternate strategy based entirely around him, who's to say? But I'm sure as heck not starting that now, I own the whole world, dang it. This man just confuses me, like, who, who is this for? And just to top it all off, this thing is on an ammo count. Per expedition outside of the Habitable Kingdom, you can only cast spells 20 times. A limited use on an attack that, not to nitpick, can still technically miss. 20 is pretty lenient all things considered, it only takes sticking a mere pinky finger back in a town to refresh them. At this point you own so much of the world there's access points to the border down near everywhere. So the ammo barely matters, it just stings a little given how specific any utility for these spells are to begin with. And also because the tutorial image randomly lies to you about the maximum number being a lot higher. And I'm gonna be nice and assume this gimmick's only messy and poorly executed as a consequence of development difficulties. There's actually a fair bit of evidence the Magical Land was only added at the tail end of the game's development. Even still, I wouldn't say all of this is necessarily enough to completely disregard the Rainbow Wizard. If this didn't exist. Yes, sir! This is the Brainy Doctor. Another secret job with a fairly obtuse method to unlock. If you buy the Royal School in Royal City, then after some time a representative from its education board will come and ask for donations. Hand in all of the donations and after six kings are felled, you'll be notified by the head teacher that the school did so well that one of its students founded a hospital on the main street of the highly prestigious Glamour Town. Go to the hospital at half past three to catch this former student turned doctor on his lunch break and he's yours. The total costs for not just the school but all its additional donations are about 21 million bol. Plus in the meantime the school itself has its own use by being able to turn children straight into adults. So already we have a secret job that costs about the same as the wizard to unlock and can be gotten a whole king fight earlier. And his ability? <sighs> a guaranteed stun. After spending a second doing an air shot, the doctor plunges a huge freaking syringe into the enemy and then they can't move for a while. No caveats. You already spent the duration of this adventure building up your soldier game, and now you can just stun an enemy at any time and the soldiers can carry on fighting as normal? Even this late, pretty sweet deal. There are already weapons in this game that have a slight chance of stunning, so it's not even a foreign concept, it just organically adds onto what you were already doing this whole time, but better. The Doctor can even attack stunned enemies, and once the stun wears off, he'll just automatically go for another one. And just like me, this thing can't miss! And if all of this wasn't enough, it has a whopping 30 uses per exploration. So, to recap, compared to the Magician, same rough price, unlockable earlier, doesn't require an entirely new strategy to use, doesn't slow down soldiers and thus interfere with the gameplay you're used to, and has more ammo. 
The Rainbow Wizard not only sucks, but is completely outclassed by another very similar job. And you know what's the final nail in the coffin for the wizard? They scrapped the girl version! Hey, 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 usually I like to leave whatever topic's next to be a complete surprise, but you're kind enough to have stuck around this long and I'm feeling a little wild today, so I'm going to let you in on it. Alright, the next video is on the King story.